What's up guys? A few weeks ago I did a review of Linux FX. It's a port of Ubuntu that is made to look and operate exactly like Windows 10 and it's really very impressive how close to Windows 10 it really is and uh, I'm going to put a link to that video up here if you want to check that out. Uh, but today I'm going to take a look at the same distro that's been ported for Raspberry Pi and uh, I'm going to see basically how this looks. Now before anybody uh, beats me to it. I do want to say that there is a highly buggy version of Windows 10 that is in development for Raspberry Pi that's actual Windows 10, but like I said, it's very buggy and it's not done yet and it's in constant development. It's really in its infancy right now, um, but as more comes out about that in the future, I'll be doing more coverage of that when the time comes. I just don't feel like I'm quite ready to take a look at that just yet, and that operating system isn't done. I am rambling again. But before we get started with this, I just want to throw out a shameless plug. The kit that I'm using in this video is a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gig kit. I'm going to put a link in the description below. And if you're interested in this kit and you buy through that link, it will help me out. But I think I've said enough here. So just like Jeff, the toolman Foxworthy always says, let's get her done. All right, if you want to get started with Windows FX for Raspberry Pi, head over to sourceforge.net slash projects slash Linux fxr slash files. I'm going to leave a link in the description below so you don't have to remember all of that. Click on the green download button and it's a pretty big file so it'll take a little while to fully download. After that finishes downloading we're going to flash it to a micro SD card. However, on a side note here, I used my micro SD card to install Raspbian for last week's video. I like to flash to a freshly formatted SD card when I do this and if your SD card is new or even newly formatted, you can just skip this part. But when I format a card, I use Minitool Partition Wizard to remove all of the partitions on that card and create a fresh FAT32 partition on that SD card. I'll put a link to download Minitool Partition Wizard in the description. But I always just do this to make sure there are no rogue partitions that could potentially cause problems down the road. After your SD card is freshly formatted, we can use Bolina Etcher to flash Windows FX to the card. Just drag the file into Etcher, select the proper micro SD card, and hit flash. Just be careful not to select the wrong SD card or USB stick, because all of the data on that device will be overwritten. Because this file has Windows in its name, Bolina Etcher gives us this error. Just ignore it, and click continue. After the flash is complete, you'll see this in Etcher. You can now remove your micro SD card, plug it into the Pi, and power on the device. On your first boot, Windows FX will resize your SD card's partition. This will take a moment. Then the Raspberry Pi will reboot on its own. When you log in for the first time, you'll be prompted for a password. By default, it's Raspberry. Then Windows FX will complete the setup process. Most of this is just fill in the blank and check the appropriate box type stuff. Just read the step, do the step, and get the banana. At this point, you'll be prompted to change the default password to whatever you prefer. And it's about this time that I figured out a 32 gigabyte SD card really isn't big enough for this OS, which is absolutely absurd for a Raspberry Pi. I went ahead and rolled with it, hoping that it would be at least good enough to take a semi-tour of the system. But if you plan on using Windows FX on the Raspberry Pi regularly, I highly recommend using at least a 64 gigabyte micro SD card or an external drive. Did I mention that the Pi 4 can now boot from an external USB drive? These are certainly amazing times we're living in. I mean, aside from this pandemic and political and economic strife. But our Pis are the best they've ever been, so you know, small victories. After updating, I got this error box. I think it has something to do with licensing, but I don't read Portuguese, so your guess is as good as mine. If you click on the button, it opens the Windows FX website also in Portuguese, but after the countdown completes, you can just close this dialog. Okay, so now that we're in Windows FX, my first impression? Well, it's really sluggish, but it does look like Windows 10. I reviewed the desktop version of this OS a few weeks ago, and I felt it was pretty sloshy for a Linux distro too. But as far as Linux distros go, they really nailed the Windows aspect of being a resource hog. That aside, it does pull off the Windows look, 
so much so that I really wouldn't be surprised if the development team gets slapped with a cease and desist. As in Linux FX, the iconography is spot on, with things like LibreOffice icons being replaced with MS Office icons, and the Ubuntu Software Center being represented by the Windows Store shopping bag. As you can see here, we do have easy access to the Linux terminal. I executed the raspi config command with no problem, and I imagine most, if not all, Ubuntu commands will work here as well. Just keep in mind that though a package may install without errors, software that won't work with ARM processors will error out when you go to launch them. The OS is packed with, in my opinion, unnecessary extras. I like versatile tech that does more than just one thing, but I hate it when operating systems are jam-packed with unnecessary bloat. But this is a Windows clone, so I guess it's just dancing to the tune that's playing. Because I believe there is so much bloat, the thing performs about like Raspbian on a Raspberry Pi 3. It can get stuff done, you just really have to be patient. I did a little bit of web surfing and checked out some YouTube video playback. And the performance is a bit lackluster. On a side note, I had to change the default audio output because I wasn't getting any sound at first. What about that for coolness? Leon are ahead on the night. So just like with the desktop version of this OS, I've had a hard time wrapping my head around who this is really for. I don't think it's going to appeal to the average Linux enthusiast, and it's just too slow and unwieldy to replace a full desktop. For that, I recommend just sticking with Ubuntu Mate. Once the wow neato factor of running Windows on a Raspberry Pi wears off, you're painfully reminded with every sluggish application launch that this is still a Raspberry Pi underneath the Windows paint job. If you have an elderly relative and you want to give them that familiar Windows experience on a Linux OS, I recommend using the desktop version Linux FX and a more powerful hardware set. I am impressed by the monumental undertaking that went into this project, but in my opinion, at the end of the day, it's just a novelty. So that's it for my review of Windows FX. Now, I don't want to dismiss or diminish anything that the developers have done in, as far as the work goes that went into this. I'm sure it was a lot of work, but at the end of the day, I think there's just a lot better uses for a Raspberry Pi for so many other projects. That being said, I'm going to wrap this video up. I want to throw out a huge thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon. And if you would like to support me on Patreon, there's going to be a link to my page in the description below. Donations are appreciated, but never expected, especially in these hard times. Look out for you and yours first. And again, I would just like to remind you that there is a link to the Raspberry Pi kit that I used in this video. It's a Raspberry Pi 4 8 gigabyte kit. I got it through Amazon. The link is going to be in the description below, and if you're interested in that exact same kit, buying through that link will help me out. Thank you so much for watching this video. Your time is valuable, and I appreciate that you spent it watching this video. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.